Hello everyone, my name is Steve Anderson and today we are going to be looking at Adobe Premiere and how it can be used or how you can use it to key out your green screen footage uh, very simply, easily, effectively, and without taking up a whole afternoon, okay? So let's just get right into it. This is what we're going to be creating. Thank you, London. It is I. We got some green screen footage that ran knockout. We're going to do a little color correction. Add a little Dr. snow and a logo, some flyouts, just eggs. all these little elements just to help it's sell the shot that, that this is an actual news correspondent. So you guys can look past the, uh, the bad Russian accent and uh, just the fact that we're just kind of having some fun here uh, and just look at the tool and what it can do possibly for your application, um, maybe something a little bit more serious than this, uh, but uh, nonetheless, Let's just dive in, okay? Because we don't want to waste any time. So here we have some green screen footage. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to drag it. Hello. Drag onto this uh, little icon right here. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a sequence. And in this sequence here, um, it's got our audio and our video there, right? And uh, the key to actually keying out green screen footage takes place at the... Um, when you're recording the footage to begin with. So you want to make sure that that green area is flat. There's no gradient and stuff like that. And you do that just by lighting it. And there's a ton of tutorials on how to properly set that up. So I'm not even going to go there, but have a look on YouTube or whatever, and you will find everything you need to know about recording some footage in front of a green screen. So next step uh, we're going to do is we're just going to use a effect called Ultra Key. right here and I find when you drop these on you can make a sound effect like which did absolutely nothing right well you hit this little eyedropper thing here pick the green done and that's it you can go home all right <laughs> now here uh, if you look at this uh, it did a pretty good job and that's just with the default now you'll notice a little bit of green up in here in fact if I just make this 50% here You'll see there's some artifacting kind of going up here. So it's not quite perfect, but I'll tell you that default setting, sometimes that'll work on its own. So there's a couple other presets here. And I, I bet if I just hit aggressive, that just took care of all of that right there. So I'm pretty happy with that. But there is some other um, options, just like in Keylight and After Effects, if that's what you're familiar with. And you can, you know, mess around with the, the choke and everything like that. Uh, for me, I'm just going to actually just leave it as this... Um, aggressive because it seems to be working fine and hey why wreck perfection right here right now well we can always go back and we can tweak that later it's a little early to be doing any of that stuff at this point so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna drop the uh, the background but first I'm gonna change this back to composite or else we won't see the background that I put in so I'm just gonna go in here and I have a little photo called well first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab this footage from our timeline here. I'm going to move it up because we want to put this photo behind it. And I'm just going to stretch. There we go. So first thing you'll notice is it's not big enough. Not a big deal, right? Um, most of you know how to size it up. And if you're ever watching tutorials on Premiere, one thing that really gets me is that everyone just gravitates to this and then they, they nudge everything like this and it's like, no, no, no. Just click on this little icon right here right just grab it move it where you want it to go and if you want it here we'll just scale this down a bit here if you want to scale it up just grab the little corners I find that way more intuitive than trying to use those little uh, uh, these little th dial dial these things in and stuff okay so just grab the corners and just click on so you just need to click on this icon right here and then done Stop messing around with those things. All right, next thing we're going to do is we're going to do a little tiny bit of color correction. And what I like to do at this point is just throw a curves on there. And if curves uh, you find intimidating, uh, don't let it. <laughs> it's actually quite easy. In fact, you can just focus on this one right here for right now. And we can just, we're just focusing on the contrast. Right now, he's way too saturated. And we're just going to lose, we just want to kind of mess around with this a bit just to kind of uh, take away some of that you can just wash them out a little bit because he's outside in, the, in a blizzard 
And we're going to add some particles over top of them, which is going to wash them out a little bit more, help sell the shot uh, that much more. And uh, let's just get right into that. And then we can always come back to this point. So no sense fiddling around and wasting time only to have it wrecked as soon as we do something else. All right, so the next thing we're going to do, I have these particles here. How did I get these, you may ask? Well, if you're familiar with our good friend Andrew Kramer over at videocopilot.net, he has a great website here, and he also shows you how to create stuff using particular, but in this case, he actually showed us how to do it using nothing more than flour and uh, a black card, okay? So if you just type in real particles, as if that didn't work. If you click on blog first and then type in real particles, what you'll find is this thing called Flower Fusion Real Particles. And this is a nice little video he put together. And you can see that he's just taking some Kleenex and throwing uh, some flour on it and then just holding it in front of the camera. Beautiful. All right, so he goes through, and you can actually watch that on your own time. Uh, or if you don't have time to do that and follow along and create your own, you can type in uh, free particles. I'm sure if I just scrolled down, I would have found it anyway, but this is faster for me. Uh, you have this thing right here, and you can just download this stock footage right here. 162 megabytes. And I'll tell you, the time it takes to download that is a lot less than setting up a camera and recording some flower. But, hey, you know what? Sometimes you might have to do that just for uh, the sake of getting the look that you're looking for. But in this case, this is the stock footage. There's a whole bunch of different ones here. All right. And the reason I'm even going into this, I know it's a green screen tutorial, but, hey, we're actually going to um, do a blending mode on this. And all this stuff is all to composite to sell a shot that you're doing in green screen because you're, you're really trying to fake something right so this is all part of it and people just need to focus on all the other elements and not just the green screen so here I'm just gonna bring this down on top of here so here is um, it's obviously too small again so I'm just gonna click on oops make sure I'm on the right layer that I want to size I'm gonna click on this little icon make it as big as we want and obviously it's on black, right? Well, guess what? It does black removal as well. Here, I'm just going to zoom this over. Make this 50%. And uh, for whatever reason, I think it's just because I'm recording. It's showing up a little bit bittier, but whatever. And what I'm going to do and now, the blending modes are kind of hidden. And I hate this part about Premiere. Uh, but if you go into Opacity, and then you go down to Screen... Boom. Done. What did we get? See, he's got some snow coming up. You know what? Let's just throw another one on there. In fact, let's just put this one. Now this one's a little bit shorter. So I'm just going to, again, click on this little icon. And I find those sound effects very essential and if I twirl this down right here I can just quickly if I hit command I'm on a Mac scale this or change the opacity I'm just gonna click with my hold down the command button click on this little line right here and the reason if you look if I zoom in here you can see that it's opacity you could be you could change different things within here but I'm just by default it's opacity so I'm just gonna fade these on and off just because I don't want it to go from a hard obviously it's um, still on black so we're just gonna go back to opacity and hit screen you can play around with some of those other blending modes depending on your effect that you're putting on top um, if you're doing like a fire or something you may want the add but uh, have a look at this all right so that's where they are and now you know uh, okay so the next thing we're gonna do <coughs> which I find is essential is add a little bit of sound effects and I, I want to just talk for a second of where you can go to get those. There's a place called Free SFX. So freesoundeffects.com. And you can type in like wind, 
search. Come on. There we go. And there's a bunch of different wind, blowing wind, gusty wind, and stuff like that. All you have to do is create an account and download it for free. I think, um, yeah, there's no, you can look at their restrictions, but for the purpose of creating videos and stuff like that, it's uh, uh, usually fair game. You just can't sell the, the audio tracks, okay? So yeah, have a look, and I'm sure you'll find, I even found like sounds of typewriters and stuff. Because finding a typewriter is very difficult nowadays. Uh, okay. So we've got our free sound effect. I am going to, where is it, right here? I'm just gonna drop that in there. Again, because we gotta appeal to all the senses, right? We gotta make this place feel like it's cold. And that's looking pretty good. All right, one last thing I'm gonna do is, uh, before I put the overlays on, is I'm gonna put some breath on there. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I, I'm gonna cheat here. This At this point, I would take this over to After Effects and this is where I would use Particular to create something like this because you're not going to find breath that's going to follow his face. So in this instance, well, all I did is I tracked his nose, his nostril right here, and then I had an emitter follow that nostril, emitting kind of like a an outward particle. And then I'm just going to drop it on here. I just baked it just for the, the sake of this tutorial. But I realize it's cheating. That's okay. I don't have a time to do a tutorial on that, and I don't think that uh, you have time to watch me uh, talk about how to make breath, because I'm sure it's probably not a high on your priority list, right? So here we go. Uh, I just plopped it on here. It looks still a little fake to me, so I'm just going to put a fast blur on it. Boom. And I'll crank this up to, like, 65. And it's just to get rid of that... Uh, the look of particles, and I think uh, I'm not sure if this is even going to match up because it's a little bit different in length, but let's check it out. And of course, we'll have to do a, a at this point, I would probably do a RAM like preview, but uh, you get the idea. Again, we're going for speed on this. Now, next, we're going to just throw a couple overlays. We have a logo. Um, this was a, a retirement video. Uh, it was just like a silly thing that we did. We grabbed a couple guys and we just shot a, a bunch of people in front of different locations showing how her, time, her retirement was going to send shock waves around the world. Obviously, we couldn't travel around the world to, to shoot these scenes, so this makes sense. But we also got a section of it shot in our local news studio, and so we were mimicking the, uh, their uh, graphics. So here we go. I got the news logo thing. We're just gonna click on this thing and shoo, shrink it down, plop it down. That easy. That's just a Photoshop file. Okay, I just got rid of the background in the Photoshop file and it's just a graphic sitting on a layer. No big deal. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna throw on a lower third. So his name, and I, what I did with, for this one right here is uh, I'll just plop this on here Boop. and you'll see it's right over his eyes pretty much so we want to move that again if I'm gonna be moving moving it I'm gonna just grab on this little icon here move it down so I can move it and scale it way more intuitive than using the sliders done now this is not me for the record okay this is a guy that sits down a few cubicles down from me so we don't want his name my name on his face so I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is this is a nested um, comp or I say comp it's a nested sequence I guess and uh, what I do is I just rendered out the animation portion of this in uh, After Effects because to be honest that's the easiest place and was, you know to, to do something like this is took what three minutes um, again I can do a tutorial on how to create a lower third but you know it's just essentially using a mask and again there's so many places I could show you how to do the very basics of that so I'm not even gonna get into that but what I did was I left the, the name and the Twitter off the animation and I can just go in here now I did all that animation within Premiere for the name 
and I'm going to change it to something that's a little bit more Russian. Marco Ramius. Anyone know where that's from? 10 points. All right, I'm going to close it. And I got I got to be completely honest. When I'm working in Premiere, I hate this stupid text box thing. I think this is like so Photoshop for but hey, you know what? We're going to make it work and it's a lot easier to go keep it in here than to go back and forth to uh, After Effects, okay? So I'm going to deal with it as best I can. I'll try not to lose sleep over it. Twitter account, we can just go in here and add at red October. I don't even know if that's a real account, but it sounded pretty Russian to me, if you know what I mean. I will refrain from doing any um, impersonations. My Sean Connery isn't up to par as it used to be. Okay, so we got Marco Ramius, the guy with the bad Russian accent. I'm going to get rid of just a little bit of house cleaning. I'm going to get rid of this. Uh, uh, CTV audio track. I don't even know why it comes up with an audio track. So just whenever you bring in a semi-comp, I guess there's no audio on it. It's just a lower third. So uh, I'm also going to put a location on here. Boom. Because it is important to know where he is. I'm getting crowded myself out here. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, delete that. I grabbed the wrong one. Uh, here we are. It's the sequence. Grab the sequence, and we'll throw it on right there. So now here we are. Here we go. Again, grab this. Unlink. I'm just gonna get rid of this audio because it doesn't need to be there. And grab this, grab the, poke the little icon. You could probably put the rulers on if you want to be more accurate. For the purpose of this, I don't see that necess being necessary. And there we go. I think that looked pretty good. And how long did that take? Like hardly any time at all. So I did about four of these different locations, one in front of a Hollywood sign and everything. And you know what? This was kind of the most layered one so I figured I'd use this one as a sample but anyways I'm I'm gonna render this out and we will see how it turns out and I'll just play it in a second here we go thank you London it is I we're here in Russia with serious suggestions Wallace working with dr. David Spence on secret formula using Fabergé eggs okay so we're back and I like leaving it on a certain frame that kind of makes me feel good like this looks good right here wow Ooh. I like to I like to put my own voice onto them Ooh. all right anyways uh, so again my name is Steve Anderson I had a lot of fun doing these kind of things so uh, leave your comments in the comments below and if there's anything that uh, you see in any of the uh, videos that I do post you want to know how I do it I'll be glad to make a tutorial. Um, it's not what I do. I don't like the sound of my own voice, but uh, people keep asking me how to do things. So I'm starting to make these things just so people stop asking me. All right. So that's it. Um, bye for now. Subscribe.